Today I challenge myself to make three different rockets in Juno New Origins in 30 seconds, 5 minutes and 30 minutes. Let's see how I did. So for the 30 second build I decided to go with a V2 style rocket since it's very simple. I started by detaching the default tank and stretching it, as well as taking the texture off as well as turning part smooth on so they're smooth at the edges. I then attached this back onto the command pod because I didn't really have time to make an actual nose cone. And of course I was using the default engine here. And finally I decided to add some wings to give it the V2 style wings. Though I didn't have time to make them look actually like the V2 style wings. And finally of course I put our very brave astronaut Sir Ben Dover into the capsule. And let's pray for his survival on this trip. Anyway, let's check out the 5 minute rocket. For the 5 minute rocket I decided not to go for any design specifically, but my main goals were to make a functional rocket which would be able to get Drew into orbit and then back down to Drew. So I decided to keep the default capsule since it already has a parachute on it. And I started making the stage for the capsule which will be the trunk and it has some solar panels on it. So we have power for our gyroscopes. Next I made the second stage I decided to make it slightly different size so it's 1.5 meters instead of 1 meters wide. I added two gas generator engines. And then since I had time I decided to add a little overlap here for it to look a little bit better. Then I added on another interstage and started the first stage tank. I made sure the first stage tank was really long and then I added four engines onto the bottom. I then went to quickly balance the engines to make sure this thing could actually get to orbit. And I realised we don't have enough thrust to weight to get off the pad really so I added four solid rocket motors to the side. These are very small and pretty simple and of course they don't burn for very long either. And at the end I finally remembered that I didn't put a heat shield on the capsule and luckily I did remember because this thing would not have survived re-entry. And we would have lost another brave druid, but luckily this time I remembered. And with the tiny amount of time I had left I tried to add some textures but I didn't really have enough time to add enough. So I loaded up our brave pilot, p Long Crust, and let's launch. So to my and probably everybody who's watching this is surprise, I actually managed to make a rocket that worked first time and I did not kill the druid, what a surprise. Anyway let's move on to the final rocket for this video, the 30 minute build. For the 30 minute build I decided that I wanted to make it mostly pretty rather than functional. Of course I did want it to be functional as well but that was a bit of a backseat compared to the looks of it. 
and I thought to myself if I can make a functional rocket in 5 minutes then I should be able to make a pretty rocket in 25 minutes and a functional rocket in 5 minutes so I should be able to make this whole thing work and look good. And if you couldn't tell by my tone, that was foreshadowing. So I started by making the second stage. I started to duplicate some fuel tanks and I wanted this thing to be 2 meters wide or about there because it's much bigger and it would fit the style more. I then started adding depth by increasing the size of some of the fuel tanks as you can see here. I then decided to add a simple fairing on top just to get that out of the way, and I think it looked pretty good as it was anyway. Then I grabbed a hemisphere and turned it upside down so it looks like the actual fuel tank of the rocket. I then put it inside the inlet and then I started placing the two engines we're going to use for the second stage. I then just quickly edited these engines so they look like nice second stage engines with big nozzles of course. It's a bit similar to a centaur stage I suppose you could say. And like the centaur stage I decided to make it use hydrogen. Next I decided to add the interstage and start building out the first stage tank. Extremely similar to how we built out the second stage. Eventually when I got to the bottom I added the intake to give it a little bit of a cover and then I started adding the new engines. I then began to optimise these engines and realised they didn't have that much thrust to weight so I copied one and added it in the middle so we had 7 engines instead of 6. The first stage engines are going to use Kerolox so we have more thrust to weight and of course I added a dome to the bottom as well. Now that functionally the rocket is finished we're going to do our detailing and the first thing I'm going to start off with is texturing. I decided to follow a pretty simple method for texturing that I've done before that worked out pretty well. I made sure the detail amount on the textures paint is at a lower level like 10% maybe. And after texturing all the tanks I then went to paint it. And I went through many iterations of different colour schemes and eventually found that the classic orange would work perfectly for the tanks. After painting most of the craft I finally decided it was time to add physical detail to it. I started off with some big pipes on the first stage. After constructing these I went on to smaller pipes on the first stage. Then I did the small pipes on the second stage. And for some weird reason I didn't decide to put the big pipe on the second stage. I have no idea what I was thinking here. After I added the pipes I then did this weird texture thing on the bottom. Then I added some fins onto the first stage because I thought it looked pretty cool. And I of course made these darker because it looked better. And finally I added some little camera pods onto the different stages so you could look up and down the craft and it would just look better. And when we got to about 28 minutes I basically ran out of ideas for detail somehow. So I decided to put our brave druid inside the rocket on a chair because that's exactly how it should be. And our final druid today is going to be Nicholas. Unless Jesus Christ had died for thee thou hast been damned barbon. No, seriously, that is an actual real name, like, look it up. Anyway, let's go and launch this new rocket. Alright, so I wanted to come back on in this part just to tell you exactly what happens here because this is about to be really, really weird and funny. Basically, as you can see, when I've detached my second stage, it started spinning out. And it got to the point where when I could control it, we were too low and we didn't have enough thrust to get into a stable orbit. So we had to re-enter. And somehow, I have no idea how this happened, but when we re-entered, the second stage somehow stabilized itself when it had no power for Gimbal. And it like power slid its way down through the atmosphere and somehow survived re-entry. And then even after we survived re-entry, there was surely no way the Druid would survive this, right? Well. Well, when we got lower into the atmosphere, I jumped out of the chair and used his jetpack and I somehow managed to make him softly splash down in the water. Like, I don't know how this guy's alive. <laughs> this, this guy is literally the luckiest druid I've ever seen. Like, how do you even survive this? Anyway, with that all done, that concludes the video. I'm going to post this craft on the Juno New Origins website just so everyone can use it. Of course, I'll make a fixed version of it so it actually works as a rocket. I'd of course like to extend a massive thanks to our members Pedro, ISA Industries and Reknorek for supplying the funding for the amazing music you could hear in this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.